These FUDs always said we were fear-mongering. They always said the government's never going to try to take away our firearms. But now we're seeing right now in real time in Connecticut what the end result of universal background checks is. Guys, watch the video and take action right away. Guys, Aaron Dorr here with an update for gun owners on HR 715. This is Joe Biden's National Gun Owner Registry. He calls it Universal Background Checks. And guys, there's been some people in the gun rights space over the last 10 or 15 years since I've been involved in the fight for gun rights who have always said that when we talk about Universal Background Checks and how it's actually a national or a statewide gun registry, they always sit back, they take pot shots, and they say, oh, come on. Our government, state government, federal government, they're never going to try to confiscate our firearms, stop fear mongering. And if we push back, they say, you guys are just trying to raise money and get people scared. Now, I'm hoping that that was, you know, 10, 15 years ago. I'm hoping that these days in the fight for gun rights, everybody is very clear on what our enemy wants to do. Joe Biden is just the figurehead of the radical left and that entire radical left machine. They hate gun owners. They hate the Second Amendment. And their goal is to confiscate every single firearm we own. But they cannot do that unless they have a first have a list of who owns what type of firearms. That is what H.R. 715 is all about. It is Biden's National Gun Registry. Guys, this bill is not sponsored by a Democrat. It's sponsored by a Republican. In fact, it's sponsored by Brian Fitzpatrick from Pennsylvania, who is one of Kevin McCarthy's best friends in Washington, D.C. It already has over 200 co-sponsors and is rapidly picking up steam right now in the Congress. So whatever else you do, hit the link beneath this video and sign your petition against H.R. 715. Now, people ask me sometimes, Aaron, what's the point? I'm in a blue state. Why even bother? I'm in New York or I'm in California. I'm in Maryland. Folks, here's the deal. Most of the time, these bills are going to come down to six or seven votes. And a lot of times it's the Republicans in blue states who will make or break these votes. So for heaven's sakes, yes, make your voice heard, sign your petition and get involved in this fight. Now, in case there's any gun owners left who still doubt the end game of universal background checks, we're going to give you a case study in this video out of Connecticut. Because for those in the East Coast, you know this. For everybody else who doesn't know this, there is a tremendous number of gun owners in Connecticut. I have family out there. I've gone shooting there quite a bit uh, in the past. And there's a huge two-way community in that state. And they're living through a hellacious time right now, in large part because their governor knows who has uh, many types of different firearms in that state. So we're going to talk about what's going on out there. It is a warning. It is a bellwether cow to the rest of us. If what happens in Connecticut happens in Congress, our nation is in serious, serious trouble. So what is the deal with Connecticut? First of all, Connecticut passed a assault weapons ban in 1993. It was the third in America to do so. And that bill back then, I wasn't involved. I was in grade school back then. But that bill primarily dealt with AR-15s. And that bill had a grandfather clause. Many times, here's one of the little rabbit trail takeaways. Almost every time we see tyranny brought upon us in the form of gun control, it comes with a carrot. And the carrot is usually a grandfather clause. Connecticut had this in 1993. So, yes, we're going to ban the sale of future AR assault weapons, namely uh, AR-15s. But if you have one right now, you can keep it if, if you get it registered with the state so we know who has what firearms. That was their first law in 93. 2013, in the wake of the 2012 Sandy Hook school situation, school shooting situation, they expanded their assault weapons ban dramatically. They specifically named over 100 additional firearms that were off limits to people in Connecticut. But again, as was the case in 93, there was a grandfather clause. And in fact, Connecticut, up until this year, allowed you to transfer those uh, assault weapons to other people in the state who also had a special permit from the government 
to possess a assault weapon. I'm going to keep air quoting. If I forget one time, you have to give me some uh, give me some slack. There was a grandfather clause, so you can keep it. You could sell it to people with a similar permit, give it to your family, or you can get it out of state. Those are your options with these AR-15s. But throughout the entire process, there was a universal gun registry in effect in Connecticut. And the government, over time, built up a massive list of every gun owner, almost every gun owner in the state. Now, fast forward to 2022, late last year, Governor Ned Lamont, that's a name you want to know. Governor Lamont hates gun owners and the Second Amendment more than Joe Biden by a considerable margin. He is the biggest fascist, statist, tyrannical pig, perhaps anywhere in America right now. And he said his big push for the 2023 session was to get rid of all grandfathered firearms in Connecticut. He said, quote, I think those assault style weapons that are grandfathered should not be grandfathered. They should not be allowed anywhere in the state of Connecticut. I think they're all killers. And so his push from his administration beginning before last session was to round up every single grandfathered AR-15 and over 100 different similar firearms in the state. How is he going to do it? Well, of course, the answer is the state has a universal background check system, and it specifically has been tracking assault weapons since 1993. So 81,000 gun owners in Connecticut who own an AR-15 or similar firearm are listed off in the government's database. And Governor Ned Lamont said his goal was to pass a law to send troopers house to house to 81,000 homes to confiscate these firearms. Now, that bill did not pass, at least not in the way that the governor wanted it to pass. Instead, what they had done is they've ended all grandfather clauses. So if you own a AR-15 or assault weapon right now in Connecticut, upon your death, it cannot go to your children. It cannot be sold. It can be sold to a gun trust or it can be given to the government. Those are your two options upon your death. They have ended the grandfather clause. They've ended the sale of these items between people in the state with a permit from the government. And they're narrowly, they just narrowly defeated the governor's intention of going house to house, door to door, and rounding up people who have an AR-15 or similar assault weapon. Now, that's I guess good news, I guess, insofar as they didn't go house to house yet. But make no mistake, this is the next final stage in Connecticut. And the first time somebody in Connecticut has one of those grandfathered AR-15s stolen from them or used against their without their consent in some criminal action, God forbid a mass shooting, you can bet your bottom dollar that the next session or the call an emergency session and the governor will get his bill passed to round up all grandfathered AR 15s in Connecticut. And they're going to be able to do it because they have universal background checks. So any gun owner out there who tells you, Oh, this is no threat. I I don't know. I I don't want to talk bad about gun owners, but either they're willfully naive or they are stupidly complicit. Because it is obvious now, our government is telling us every day now what their agenda is. Beto O'Rourke was saying on the on the debate stage, yes, hell, hell yes, yes, we're, we're going to come and grab AR-15. your AR-15s. HR 715 is a necessary precursor to enable future gun confiscation. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. So again, right now, if you're in a blue state, The Republicans in your state congressional delegation can make or break this bill. You must sign your petition. If you're in a red state right now, this is a Republican-sponsored gun control bill. Again, GOP-sponsored gun control. And Brian Fitzpatrick, the sponsor, is going around working the entire conference, trying to flake off two or three Republican rhinos to support it. And if that happens, there's going to be a mad dash of weak need rhinos who will support this bill with their co-sponsorship. So, guys, you must make your voice heard. If you're in a blue state, if you're in a red state, it doesn't matter. Stand up and make your voice heard. You know, some key takeaways as to what's happening right now in Connecticut. First one to me is very obvious. That is that any 
limited assault weapons ban will only be expanded uh, very quickly, very quickly. This is the radical left's um, classic MO. They'll pass a scaled back version of what they want. They'll tell gun owners, oh, it's okay. This does not apply to you. It applies to generations down the road. They'll, they'll wave the carrot at us. Any limited scope assault weapons ban by definition is designed to be expanded. We cannot accept any version of that. Number two, the same thing is true when it comes to universal background checks. These are this is a state, this is a state or national gun registry. We all know this, and it's designed to be expanded. So the carrot they offer right now is, oh, it's okay. If you want to sell a gun or give a gun to your kids or grandkids, that's okay. We're not trying to register your grandpa's shotgun. That's what they say now. But again, the first time one of those grandfathered firearms is used in a crime, they will take away the familial exception and they will register every single firearm and have the list they're looking for. The third takeaway to me, I think is pretty obvious as well. And that is to buy privately owned firearms. I get it. You can't get what you want off the rack. It's not as easy as shopping online. <clears throat> but if you want to keep the government from knowing what firearms you have, you cannot buy them from dealers. Now, I want to be clear, not given legal advice. Certain states have certain requirements, how many guns you can buy in a certain amount of time before you're a trafficker, one gun a month. There's various regulations. I'm not saying break the law. I'm simply saying where possible, we must buy privately. There's no other way to keep the government from knowing what guns you have. If you buy it from a dealer, you can rest assured that somehow or other that transaction and your name will wind up in a federal database, period, period. If you want to avoid that, buy and sell privately. And again, finally, hit the link below or above and sign your petition and get involved in this fight. We have too many Republicans who are selling us out in D.C. And frankly, too many gun owners who are sitting back trusting blindly in our GOP-controlled house right now in D.C. Guys, we cannot do that. Join the fight. Hit the link. We'll keep you guys informed. Take care.